Um, this is a good day. It's an exciting day. Um, it's quite, you know, I love baptisms. How many of you love baptisms? The, just the, the chance that we get together to support, to toe talk or someone as they go under, they take this step of, um, of new life, yeah? And, um, and I'm, I'm really excited. It's been a big part of my life journey go- growing up. Um, I've always loved those moments that we would get to share. The church I grew up in, we would go to someone's house and it would be in a pool or we'd do it down, down in the Waikato River. Um, it was always quite cool, um, just gathering, but as a way of just supporting somebody in that journey uh, for that step they were taking. And today, eight people going under. It's, that's, a, that's an amazing, is that the most we've ever done it at one time? Something like that. So it's just powerful. God is doing amazing things among us, isn't he? This is so cool, and we had one only a few weeks ago as well uh, with Bill. So um, this is an awesome season to be in, to be part of. Um, Pastor Roger spoke a couple of weeks ago about um, the journey of Israel out of Egypt, the journey out of bondage and slavery through the waters and into the promised land, into that new life. The amazing picture, beautiful picture of going through the waters, and that was in Corinthians, Paul likens that to, that's what, like baptism, they were baptized into Paul, he says. Um, I want to sort of, I guess, sit on that and sort of essentially focus on that same sort of idea today, but just from a slightly different angle, um, and uh, perhaps a slightly different angle than we, that, that maybe we normally think about. I know for me growing up, baptism was sort of like a, like a next step in your journey. For me, and that's just kind of how I approached it, I'm not saying anyone else is like this, but um, it was sort of like when you really know that you're really into this and it's a real kind of thing and you've been doing it for a while, it's like I think I better cement, you know, seal the deal or uh, make sure that it's, um, it's, it's full, full on, um, I'll get baptized. And so I know for me it took a long time bef- between actually becoming a Christian and then being baptized because that was kind of my approach. And I guess I just want to sort of come at it from a slightly different angle today because I think God wants to, there's something in, in Paul that I think it would be really good for us to sort of sit on and think about when it comes to this, this idea of baptism. I think it will transform our perspective when we understand what Paul is trying to say. I've been reading through Romans, and if you know Romans, it's like quite a dense, thick book of, of like, theology, unpacking what it means to be a Christian, what we have in this Christian life, and etc. Um, and he's been talking about, you know, sin, and then God's covering of our, of our sin and grace. And he gets to Romans 6. We're going to have this on the screen. And he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? So he's saying, just keep sinning because God will keep covering you with his grace. Doesn't that, you know, that makes sense? He says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Well, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. It's quite strong language, isn't it? That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. We've been, we, we are baptized into Christ's death. It's a powerful, powerful statement. And, and I guess for me, like I said, this wasn't a huge focus for me with baptism growing up. But it, it's just so, it's right there, isn't it? It's saying... Paul is inviting us not to just see what Jesus did at the cross as like, on my behalf, thanks for that, I'm forgiven because of what you did. He's saying, through this baptism, united, we become united to Christ in that same death. There's something very significant about baptism. 
when we go under the water, it's not just down, up, and thank you, and, and, and we're showing all our friends we're real Christians. It's more like go down, die, experience resurrection life in an instant. And I think we need to tra- just change our perspective a little bit to think this is profound. This is deep. A little water pun there for you. Um, Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ living in me. So my first point, baptism enacts the death of our old self. Take a moment to think about that. When I go under the water, and when I come out, it's not me, it's not the same me that came out of the water. I'm talking in a spiritual sense here. At a spiritual level, something of a death has taken place. And it's quite significant. Paul carries on after this passage um, in Romans talking about if you're married and one of the marriage partners passes away, the, um, the covenant that you've made, the commitments you've made to each other, they, it's not that they're broken, but they're not no longer that covenant is no longer in place. You're not bound to a person after they've passed away. Now, and he's likening that to baptism. We have a sin nature. When we die to that, in that sin nature, we come out of the water. It's a new thing. And the, the law of sin and death that once reigned over, my, over me and my body has been cut off. It's no longer there. So baptism is the sign of our inward faith. I have an inward faith, a belief that what Jesus did at the cross was for me. I claim that over my life and I seal it by going under the water and coming out. It's a picture of of the death of the old and the resurrection of the new. And it's like it's replaced the the, the sign of circumcision, of cutting off in the old covenant, in the new covenant we have baptism. What we do, we go under, come out, and I am a new, new creation, God says. So it joins us to Christ in his death on the cross. This is significant what you guys are doing this morning. It's powerful. And while to watch, you know, to look on, it may not seem like much has happened. It happens in an instant. I want, to, um, I want to be very clear that all of the spiritual world saw what happened, and they know exactly what's happened. To us on what, observing, it may have just been a moment. You come out of the water, and may not feel much different, but I tell you what, all of the powers of darkness know exactly what's happened, right? We were slaves to sin. We were bound, born, lived in our sin. We were helpless to, to overcome that sin. We, what we needed was a savior and Jesus provided that for us. So when we go under the water and come out, something's been broken off. Because, because I mean, if you're, if you're dead like that, um, the, like I said earlier, we can't be held in that covenant of, of sin and death anymore. You died. Amazing. The powers of darkness and the nature of sin and death has lost its grip on your life. Satan, the accuser, he will try and tell you, he, he will try and tell you, you're still in my, my grip. But you now have something to say, absolutely not. No, I've gone, I have done the deed and I have died to my old self. You now have no legal right to claim anything over my life anymore. So that's the first I want to encourage every one of you that's being baptized to stand in that, to look back and to remember this day. This is the day that those chains were broken, officially. Not just, oh, it felt kind of cool and I I guess I'm free. No, no, no. Legally, before God and before all of the powers of darkness, you are free. And we need to learn to stand in that. We are no longer slaves to sin. Those are lies that the devil will try and throw at you, but it's no lies. Paul goes on to say we are, we, we are now slaves to righteousness. 
what before we were slaves to sin and death that would drag us further down into, the, into darkness. The cutting off that happens at baptism means that now I'm a slave to righteousness. And this righteousness is a life that bubbles up out of me. It's a life that grows in my, in my life. It's not something that I, oh yeah, it happened, it's, we just carry on. No, no, no. Righteousness begins to flourish and bloom in your life. So I want to declare that over every person being baptized today. Expect righteousness. Expect right living. Expect the Holy Spirit to come and begin to empower you to live right and to live well. Expect victory over sin. Just as I joined Christ in his death, verse 5 says that we should experience the resurrection power in our lives. Resurrection. Back from the dead. When Jesus walked the earth post-crucifixion, when he came back to life, he was a different kind of person. People sort of, there were moments where people didn't recognize him. There were moments where they'd be praying in a locked room and there he was all of a sudden. He just had this different ability to just do things that were different. Um, he, he was in a resurrection body. And what, what Paul's saying is, if we've, exp- if we've joined Christ in his death, then as we come out of that water, we can expect to see resurrection life in our own lives. So, that's a, that's a faith statement. I'm expecting to see resurrection life in, my, in, in me, around me, flowing out of me, rivers of living water. So, what does resurrection life look like? I don't know if things have been coming up on the screen. I haven't looked. But number one, freedom from sin. Right? The, the powers of sin held us locked in. And, and the, we, were, we were powerless to overcome its, its influence on our lives. We went down, came out, and it's like God has declared us free from that. Those chains have been broken. So expect to see that over time, I'm going to become free from the sin that entangled me, right? Now, I'm not saying overnight. I mean, if we've been walking with Christ for for long, you'll know it takes some time, right? It's relational. It's a relationship, and God is going to, over time, bring freedom to your life. He's going to bring, and you're going to look back in the days to come and see, God, you broke those chains. They held me so powerfully, but look now, they're broken, Look now, they don't have that same power over me anymore because I'm a slave to righteousness right now. The second thing, what we should expect to see in our lives is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, uh, Peter said, you know, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to move in and he's going to begin to open things up and you're going to start to see things. This is fruit, the fruit of that Spirit, love, Joy, peace. Sasha spoke a few weeks ago. I saw you somewhere. There you are. About that amazing peace that you experienced because of the presence of God in your life when you went through that experience of um, going into surgery. That peace. How many of you know the peace of the Holy Spirit? That's not a peace you can find just in the world, right? This is, this is powerful and miraculous. The third thing, miraculous events. Expect to see that God breaks in and does things you didn't expect to see and that no one around you can explain. Okay? And I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to tell you what, you what the miraculous events you can expect are. But do not be surprised when you're like, that shouldn't have happened like that. But look, God put all those things together. It's a miracle. Isn't that awesome? So I wanted to encourage you this morning. For those being baptized today, Know that these moments ahead in the next few minutes, these are transformational moments. They're not just a token thing that we're doing. It's not just another step in the journey. This is transformational, right? This is death and resurrection life. God has given us his life, his resurrection life, so we need to learn to stand in that and claim it from this point on. But I wanted to also challenge for those who have been baptized, do we stand in that resurrection life? 
Do we, are we aware of that resurrection life? Maybe it's an encouragement to one or two this morning. Learn to stand in that resurrection life. Learn to expect the miraculous, the presence of God and the fruit of his spirit in our lives. This is why it's so important we do this as a community, because as we watch someone go down and come out, the spirit energizes us too. It's good for us to see it, to witness it and be a part of it. And look, I wanted to challenge for those of you yet to step into that, to take that step. Maybe you've been on the journey with Christ for a little while now. I want to encourage you. Why wait? Like we heard a couple of weeks ago, this is, this is resurrection life available to you. It's the sealing of the deal that you've made in your, in your heart with God. Take the step because it's like, it's like God is going to empower you in an amazing way in the, in the years to come. So I, I, that's all I wanted to share. I just wanted to just bring a focus that we are accessing resurrection life this morning. So why don't we pray? I'm going to pass over and we might hear from some of these ones that are, um, that are going to take the plunge this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who has provided the way through, Lord, as we, as we heard a few weeks, and through the, the waters, Lord, through the waters of death and sin. Jesus, you took it on yourself, Lord, and today uh, we just, Lord, we look to you, Jesus, at the cross, Lord. We connect ourselves to you and what you've done. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the amazing power that you have shown to break the power of sin and death. And we claim that into our lives this morning. Lord, we stand in the righteousness that you've earned, Lord, and we ask, Lord, for that spirit of resurrection, Lord, to bubble up out of our lives, Lord, that we would see in the days to come righteousness. Lord, we would see good living coming, Lord, because we know that your life, your resurrection power is, is at work in each one of us. So we invite you, Lord, to just to unveil our eyes as we watch this morning, as we engage, and for each of those ones uh, that are being baptized, Lord, that they would know, God, that you are sealing the deal with each one of them, and you have them in your hands, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh -huh.